Hey, I'm Sam and I do design, and in the video today, I'm showing you how to use clipping masks in Procreate 4.2. So we are two days into the new Procreate 4.2 release and I really wanted to show you guys the new clipping mask feature that they've just implemented. I think it's such a powerful tool to have on the iPad and I'm so glad it's come to Procreate 4.2. So I've got a fun little task for us to do today that can get us learning about clipping masks and how to use them. So the reason why we're going to use clipping masks instead of just erasing the corners of the iPad is uh, clipping masks are non-destructive and erasing it is destructive. So if you ever want to go back after closing the file down and coming back into it, you can't press undo and those changes are forever. Uh, clipping masks get around that by being non-destructive and you can always go through and change the layer afterwards. Okay, so in Procreate 4.2 you can see that I've loaded in a photograph of my iPad on a wooden desk and I have exposed for the desk and the Apple Pencil. And what we're going to do is superimpose an image of the screen on top of this so that it exposes perfectly for both. If I took a picture of this iPad with the screen on, the camera that I've got is going to start trying to expose for the screen or the scene, but it can never get it all at the same time. So one thing is going to be underexposed or overexposed. Doing it this method means you'll get a clean and crisp picture every single time. And the new clipping mask feature in Procreate 4.2 means that once you set this up in one picture, you can use it so many times again and again as a template and you never have to worry about it again. I've chosen a picture here where you can see the difference between the screen edge and the bezel edge and that's going to be really important when we start to mask off that section of the screen. So on a new layer over here, I'm going to come in with the selection tool, make sure it says freehand down at the bottom. And what I'm going to do is just start tracing over the screen and just overshoot a little bit. Uh, and you can see me using the selection tool here. I'm going to put a dot there. And coming up over here, just before the curve, I'm going to put another dot. And that's going to join up both dots with a straight line. And that's perfect for selecting the iPad screen. And then what I'm going to do is also trace around this corner here. So I'm going to just trace around it like this. And you'll see here that I made a little loop so that I could come back on myself and start the curve really smoothly. Because what the selection tool is going to do is just select everything from the outermost selection. So even that loop to loop there is going to get selected as well. So now that I've gone to the other corner, I can come over to this side, put in another dot that's going to join it up again. And then literally just go over the same again for all four corners. Okay, with that selected, you can see here that we've got this uh, selection mask going on here. And all I'm going to do is drag in a color from the edge and then fill in just that section there. So then when we go into our layers, I can turn off the back layer and you can see we've got a perfect outline of just the iPad screen that we've got a solid color on. This is what we're going to use as a clipping mask when we put our screenshot on top of it. So now that we've got our screen done here, what I'm going to do is come over to this side and insert a photo. And I'm going to find the screenshot that I took of a pair of glasses, place that in there. And what I'm going to do now is go over to the little N in the corner and lower the opacity by a fair bit. What that is going to let us do is when we start to move it around, the lower opacity will mean we can see through it and we can see to the edges of the corners that we need. And to make that even easier, I'm going to hide the back layer because we don't need that anymore. I'm going to come in and press the move tool. And then down the bottom, you can change the type of moving that you want to do. So I'm going to go to distort. And what that's going to do is let me move each individual corner on its own. So I can then come through and line this up. and then just press the arrow button again to make sure that's banked. We can bring up the opacity and you can see here, we've got the corner still showing. So what we're going to do then is come over to our layers panel, click on the layer we want and press clipping mask. And that's going to clip it perfectly to the layer underneath based on the pixels that it's showing. Now what we need to do is come back into the layers tab, 
open up the layer with the picture on and you can see now we've got a perfectly exposed scene and screen ready to post to Instagram. But there is one more trick that I wanna show you guys and if you saw my last tutorial on this similar type of thing, uh, you'll know where I'm going with this. What I'm gonna do is open up a new layer, make sure I'm using a black pen, uh, I'm gonna use a monoline, and I'm gonna fix the issues that I can see here with the Apple Pencil. So. Tricks of the trade means that you're always looking for ways to neutralize the light uh, in photographs and make sure you're shooting with the right color temperature for the photo that you need. I was just photographing with daylight today, so the Apple Pencil is showing some blue light coming in from the window and I just wanna neutralize that. So the way that I'm gonna do that is use the monoline tool and I'm gonna come in here and just really quickly, Okay, then what we're gonna do is come over to the little N over here, which changes the blend mode. And I'm gonna come over to saturation. And you can see here, if I turn that layer off and on, you can see just how different the blue and neutral look is. So with those two tricks, you are ready to post to Instagram. The benefit of this version is that you can always go through and change the image that you've inserted and your edges of the iPad screen will remain the same every single time. So now that I've done this, I'll never have to do it again. And that's gonna save me so much time in the future with setting these things up every day. Clipping masks are just one new feature from a huge selection in Procreate 4.2. I want you to comment down below your favorite feature of the new update, and I'm gonna try and do a video on those later on. If you learned anything in this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell button and everything else that YouTube asks you to do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.